Hey guys, I don't like stretches. I don't like stretching a muscle because it doesn't make much sense to me. And there is uh, ample evidence also in research that shows us that there is no benefit to muscle stretches. Neither do we improve our performance, nor is there the benefit of reducing the risk of injury. So why do we stretch? And as we look at animals, I've never seen a dog doing a systematic stretch before going out for a walk. Um, but I've seen a dog doing stretching positions like we do in the morning when, we have, when we're waking up. Um, but that is not a stretch. That's more of an extension and a simultaneous contraction um, that we're facing there. And uh, dogs, they also get into position to wash themselves where... Um, well, let's not go there, but uh, they are very flexible. I have not seen this with humans, uh, because probably because we we're just sitting around for too long and um, in positions that our body is getting used to. So I have developed a, a little stretching protocol, which is no revolution. You will know all of these positions from somewhere. Uh, and um, this stretching does not stretch the muscle. I do not want to stretch the muscle, but we want to address the fascia. So how do we, because uh, that is the way to not stretch the muscle, but gain flexibility. And uh, I will show you a few positions that go from one position into the other. So I'm not moving from one muscle to the other. I'm going from one position to the other, um, and I am going to address multi-joint stretches, which is the only way to address the fascia. So each position should be held for about five to six breathing cycles, and the breathing cycles is abdominal, purely abdominal. So you go from here, breathe in. This is like fifth month or sixth. And breathe out. That was almost like that. So each position you want to hold for five breathing cycles all the way to seven or eight. If you don't have the time, reduce it to three breathing cycles. I will just go from one position into the other so that you know the sequence of the stretches. So we will start about shoulder width, hip width apart with the legs. Arms go very high up and then you grab one of your wrists and pull it out. As you pull it out, do not bend. That's not what you want. You want to see yourself in a, in a pipe that is stiff and all comes all the way up to here. So you want to pull yourself out of that pipe and over and breathe into your abdomen. Okay, five or six times. And then you take the other side. And the main stretch that you should feel should be in this area all the way down. Then you lock your elbows, your hands are interlaced like this, and you're reaching down to the ground with the full hands, with the complete hand surface, and the knees are also locked. You go all the way down, 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 down. And you can go, go ahead and try it in a smooth and fast movement and also compare it to a very slow release where you just let it down very, very slowly and you will experience that it's much harder to reach the ground as you approach it to go slowly. And of course, you go down fast. From here, we go into the Chinese squat. The Chinese squat, I call it because I've seen these people in China, they take a lunch break in this position, um, and also in the Middle East, it's a, it's a very um, common position where you just squat down and uh, you can talk and uh, just relax like this. It's very important to keep the feet flat on the ground, the arms are between your, your knees, and you put your hands, nail them down. If you can, bring your elbows down to the ground as well, and still make sure that your 
that your heels are on the ground, and you'll be surprised how much of a stretch this is, although it really looks like very flexed. Wherever your hands are, keep them on the ground, and just lift your butt up and lock your knees. I do not want to see this. Keep your hands flat on the ground, and the same with your heels. And you do this a few times, extending, reaching out further and further, go back up, and bring your butt towards the ceiling, push it up, and bring your chest towards your heels. You also know this position as a down dog position from yoga. So go back down, and just nail everything down like this. All the way apart, like this. Five or six breathing cycles. Then you move forward and drop your hip. Push yourself out of the ground. So do not drop like this. Come up here, head up, and your legs up. Like this. Drop your hip. Open your mouth to allow your head to fall further back and breathe deeply into the abdomen, and this way you will also stretch the esophagus. Ah, nice esophagus stretch. Okay, then you drop. Go long, shoulder width, not like this, shoulder width apart. Uh, basic rule is now heels are, are always pointing and the feet are flexed and the knees are locked at all times. Start with the right leg and bring it as far up as you can towards the ceiling and drop it on the other side. Make sure to leave your hands where they are and breathe into your abdomen. This is a great stretch and you can feel it all the way from here over the flank of your body all the way down to your legs. Um, Make sure that you're pointing your heels out and extending both knees so they must be locked. Can you turn around, back up, down. Do not drop it. Control. Control it. Left leg all the way up. And roll it over. five or six breathing cycles deeply into your abdomen. Come back up, drop, push yourself up, bring your butt right above your knee, arms front, palms up, head forward, and bring your chest down. Feet are flexed, breathe. Next position is to scoot back and put your butt onto your heels, open your legs a little bit, and allow your belly to fall between your knees. Go really flat. Here you can even drop your feet, point your toes, palms up, and drop. Breathe. And you come up. You sit on, the, on your feet, so the feet are pointed, like this, and then you lift your knees up. Swimmers do this on a regular basis. This is probably the only stretch that is not multi-joint targeted. Walk forward, put your feet up. Walk backward and roll onto your arms. Fingers are pointed forward. They're not like this, they're pointed forward. And here you want to peel yourself out of the body, really tall, lock your elbows, and go really high. Bring your chest out. This stretch you should feel on your biceps. Bring your knees forward. Now drop your elbows, bend your elbows, go down, this will give a good, nice stretch on your biceps tendon, 
and shoulder girdle. Now you roll backward, sit down, lock your knees, pull your toes up so feet are flexed, stand, sit up very tall, and now pull the nerves and pull the nerves out of your spine, as well as give the fascia a good stretch into extension. So lock your elbows and extend your arms as if they were antennas. And you really want to double your wingspan. So go really high out. And at this point, it should be already very, very uncomfortable. Um, but that's what we're looking for. Breathe into your abdomen, out. And now roll down with your nose tip into your belly button. And keep your feet flexed, the knees are locked. And breathe out. Now make sure that the arm uh, is completely pulled out of your trunk. The arm itself starts with the scapula. It's not only the shoulder, it's the whole scapula that you want to pull out of your trunk like this. And then roll. Roll. Ah. Discomfort. Ah. Oh. And then come up. Whoop. And now second position is reach down forward. Really get your arms out of your trunk and bring your nose tip to your ankles. Towards your ankles. Pull your toes up. Very uncomfortable. Extreme bad pain. Ah, I hate this. Yes, it feels good. And then you come back up, sit up, relax, lay down. Feet are flexed, knees are locked, arms are, are also extended, elbows locked, fingers up. Now, same law, same rule. Feet always stay flexed and the knees locked. You start with the right one, going up. You can, just pretending if you had a very tight pants on, in order to get up there, you would probably do this, and then push it up. So this is what you could do. Bring your knee over your chest, and now push your heel towards the ceiling. And you'll see that you get much further. Uh, and going this way. So first bring it up here, push your heel up, knees are locked, uh, fingers are up towards the ceiling. If you want to intensify, you should turn it down like that. Turn it forward, drop the knee over, and don't forget this lower leg. Also, this must be extended. Breathe. Uh, five or six times, bring it back up, keep it there, five or six breath cycles, let it down, control, left leg up, whoops, sorry, go this way, up the heel, and over, Ooh. Five or six breathing cycles into your abdomen. Bring it back up and let it down. Oh, this was good. Now, the candlestick, arms go here, legs go up, here. And now, let your knees drop the next three years. it back up. It's really difficult to talk in that position. Bring it down. Control. But breathing into your abdomen while your knees are next to your ears will allow your abdominal organs to rearrange themselves, you know, to, to find all the corners to spread into. And uh, it will give them a little bit of a massage. So with this, we're actually finished.
you can do this kind of stretch at any time, whether it's before practice, after practice, uh, it will not slow you down. If it's after practice and you're sending the athlete back um, home to rest, um, you may want to do the next, the very last position that you, we also know from yoga, um, which is something like uh, the baby position or something. So um, please bear with me if I did not use the right terminology, but the position is basically you're finding the most comfortable position in this, uh, in this position, and then you put your forehead down, the arms are next to your body, the back of your hand is on the ground, shoulders are melting down, and your forehead is right here, and you breathe between your legs, in and out. So that's where I leave the athlete. And you can combine this, so it's hard to talk down there, so I will um, talk into the camera. Um, it is very nice to combine this with some autogen training techniques, um, where you suggest, where you let them feel how they breathe in into the abdomen, allow them to pretend and to feel the air going into the arms, inflating the fingers and going back up, allow them to feel how the, breath, how the breath is actually uh, going through the upper airways, filling up the lungs and the abdomen. And that will really nicely uh, lead to, a, um, to an excellent uh, relaxation status, uh, relaxation mode. Um, and after that, they're actually ready to go to bed. To bed. Um, so once again, the position looks like this. And then I basically just shut up for 60 seconds and leave them alone uh, with their breaths. So, and uh, you can also leave me alone with my breath. Finish. Got it. 